Today we will cover the top 10 full on best weapons based on a mixture of damage and utility in different circumstances in Mass Effect Andromeda. The categories we'll be assigning weapons to today are Best DPS Pistol Best DPS Assault Rifle Best DPS Shotgun Best Sniper Rifle Best Versus Shields Best Versus Armor Best Per Shot Best AoE or Area of Effect Best Melee Support and Best Overall Weapon Remember that your personal preference overrides any of this all weapons can be used to play the game. Sure, there are some that would make it ridiculously hard, like the Sonnet with a single fire system, but even that, if used carefully, could be your primary weapon on insanity. But chances are that one of your favourite weapons is on this list in some form. The buffs used in the DPS calculations, as well as all of the stats, are based on a medium hybrid soldier build. The full list of buffs and buff origins can be found in the description to peruse at your leisure. The best pistol for, in general and definitely for DPS, is unsurprisingly the M25 Hornet, specifically when used with the automatic fire system. If you don't use that, it falls to the sidewind, which is about 20% lower damage than the Hornet with auto fire. But considering how easy the automatic fire system augment is to get, it would be pointless not to use it. Its accuracy is good, its weight is low, its force is expectedly low, but considering its huge 950 rate of fire, that force builds. The clip size and max ammo are perfectly acceptable. The Hornet beats with or without a bioconverter, with the bioconverter adding around 50% more damage per second. The Hornet has no shield or armor modifiers, but does have a weak point damage bonus of 25%, which it has the accuracy and stability to utilize at short and medium range. The optimum augment and mod build would involve automatic fire system, bioconverter, dub mod extension, and a kinetic coil if you have the cryo perk. For mods, you'll want barrel, receiver, light magazine, and either scope or melee optimizer, depending on whether you melee or even prefer to have a scope. The best assault rifle is a difficult one. It's not so clear cut unless you make DPS the primary deciding factor, at which point it becomes the Hornet's slightly bigger brother, the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie is actually a little less powerful than the Hornet there is something I would do extra with the Valkyrie to give it a personalised edge. Firstly, you'll also want the automatic fire system, as well as a bioconverter, though as with the Hornet, the Valkyrie is still the most powerful without the converter. You usually want a dub mod extension, but instead place a beam emitter. The beam emitter will override the function type, which here is auto anyway, and it won't affect the damage directly, but by having this we negate the need for a stock or scope. This also allows us to use different mods to take accuracy and give us more damage. At the higher levels this is like 4% more damage than the standard barrel which is more than a kinetic coil. Quite a little extra. The primary downside with using the beam emitter is that it cannot penetrate, so no receiver needed, but can't shoot through things. For this build you will want to put in an automatic fire system, bioconverter, beam emitter and two kinetic coils. For the two mods, you'll want a short barrel and a heavy magazine if you can take the weight, or a standard magazine if not. Stability is still a very slight issue with the Valkyrie, even if it has the beam emitter, but it is easy to control at medium to long ranges. It should also be noted that the sweeper with the automatic fire system is superior versus shields over the Valkyrie, due to its 115% shield bonus modifier, but considering how a shield hit points are usually about half of the health, the sweeper's roughly 50% extra damage against shields, but much lower damage against all else, makes the Valkyrie the best overall DPS choice. Shotguns have a number of good options, the primary three being the Darn, the Hesh and the Prana. I would name the best as the Hesh, purely as it is the highest against armour. It's not very far behind the Darn at all for shields, and for red bars, it's very close to the Darn. Considering the Darn is a lot lower on armour, the Hesh wins here. It has the lowest accuracy of all weapons though, which makes less of a difference than you would expect. If combined with the automatic fire system, it is a little unstoppable, but with the added accuracy hit, it is best not used at medium range. It will still hit most of its pellets per shot, but the damage is reduced. This weapon is for up-close skirmish style attacking, dealing frankly insane amounts of damage to everything in the way. You have a choice for the augments. You can either add a beam emitter, taking away its penetration but adding a whole lot of range. If you decide to do this, you have more freedom for mods. 
As far as any personal preference goes, I find the satisfaction of using the Hesh without the beam to be far greater than with, so we'll go for that. So here are two builds for the Hesh. Build 1 is automatic fire system, bio converter and two kinetic coils with your mods being barrel and receiver. Build 2 is automatic fire system, bio converter, beam emitter and kinetic coil with your mods being long barrel and heavy melee, if you can take the weight or just a melee optimizer if you cannot. Now for the sniper rifle we won't be looking at DPS, as with the sniper rifle it's about accuracy. This is the only sniper rifle choice in this video, so we'll take into account damage per shot as well as utility, weak point bonus and whatnot. If you want DPS best then I would say it's the shadow. Its additive damage bonus per bullet mixed with shield bonus makes it a pretty decent automatic sniper rifle, getting better with an automatic fire system, but it's not better than a Hornet or Valkyrie. The Lanat deserves a nod here as when charged it damages the highest per shot of all of the sniper rifles. Not only this but it also has a shield damage modifier and a 70% weak point bonus but I don't consider its trade off of time a good enough reason to use. Its projectiles are slow due to plasma type to which isn't a very good long range unless you are shooting for a super secret takedown where you one shot everything so no alarms go off. I think the Black Widow is the best sniper rifle as while the Ishara and Widow are both more powerful per shot they are both single shot guns per mag, whereas the Black Widow isn't much lower per shot, but has in my test parameters 5 shots. The Black Widow has no shield modifier but I consider that minor for a sniper rifle, and the most important 70% weak point damage bonus is there. For such a weapon I would consider the bio converter a privilege, not a necessity, you don't need it but it is convenient. If you were to opt out of the bio I'd suggest not a kinetic coil but a battlefield assist module giving you 20% damage when your health and shields are full. But with the Black Widow's maximum ammo not being super duper huge and a sniper often not being by the ammo pods, I would use either a bioconverter or a vintage heatsink. Assuming the bioconverter, your build should be bioconverter, double mod extension and three kinetic coils. Your mod should be vented barrel, receiver, tactical scope if you can take the weight, normal if not, and ultralight materials. If you decide to go for the Battlefield Assist module instead of the Bio or Vintage, you should change the Ultralight Materials mod to the Heavy Spare Clip if you can take the weight, or Spare Thermal Clip if you can't. The best weapon versus shields is an easy one, it's the Darn. If you combine the Darn with an automatic fire system it unlocks its Bankai, it's just ridiculous. With the parameters I'm using for this video it has 5 shots and should be used with a bio converter to reach its full potential. Not only does the Darn have a 115% shield damage modifier, but does 25% bonus damage to weak points. I've used the Darn without even having the automatic fire system to down Ascendant in one go on insanity. It's a stupid powerful weapon and will demolish shields. The build for this one is automatic fire system, bio converter and 3 kinetic coils. Full mods go with a barrel and receiver. For anyone curious, I consider the penetration too important on this weapon to use a beam emitter. It would be simple to say the best weapon versus armour is the Hesh, and for DPS it is, but I would actually go for the Piranha here. That is if you add a seeking plasma system augmentation to it. This extends the range of the Piranha by a very large amount, keeping its damage from dropping off early. When fighting such things as Fiend in open areas you can fire on them from a longer range, usually killing it before it gets to you on insanity. For closer range fights the Hesh does beat it but as we've already done the Hesh let's see the more universally good Piranha build. You'll want a Seeking Plasma System, Bio Converter and two Kinetic Coils. For mods you could get away with the Long Barrel's Accuracy debuff. The Piranha has ok accuracy and with the Seeking Plasma it won't miss the max of 10% from the rank 10 version of the mod but it will gain a solid 3% damage over the standard rank 10 barrel, a worthy trade. The Prana has no weak point bonus so go ahead with a quick receive that debuffs weak point bonuses for a higher penetration damage and distance. The best per shot weapon is of course the Darn, but not in the previously mentioned build. Technically the highest build involves a single fire system augment, but it doesn't improve the per shot damage enough to warrant the crazy minus 50% rate of fire drop, it destroys the DPS. The good point for per shot and DPS balance is the vanilla, which consists of a bio converter and four kinetic coils. This is that build I was talking about that demolishes Ascendants in a single batch, though of course when it comes to DPS, the other build wins, so for Ascendants, rewind to number 6. 
the mods you'll want for this one-shot wonder are the standard barrel and receiver. So this is an interesting and cool one. It's not about the DPS, or at least not single target DPS. It's about the overall spread and ability to boom many at once. I have had to redo this choice since initially recording. The best AoE used to be the scattershot, but it's been a while since I tested. After testing it appears the nerf to plasma charge on shotguns is too great. I tested the scattershot with all of the similar augments, including the grenade and sticker grenade, and it is just awful. If you look at the augments for what they give non-shotguns, the plasma charge is outstanding. It reduces rate of fire by 10% but increases damage by 10%. So it's clearly the way to go for AoE. Then there's the Talon. A shotgun that is labelled as a pistol, it shoots 7 pellets. It shoots more than the scatter shot and only one less than the highest pellet per shot shotguns. But it has none of the negative aspects of using a plasma charge on a shotgun. Sure the rate of fire, but it even has a 10% damage increase. I put this bad boy together and it just destroys. Even single targeted does some beastly damage. Against multiple targets, this is a very valid weapon. It also has 125% damage bonus to armor and 25% weak point damage. So yeah, it's pretty badass. For this build, you'll want a plasma charge system, bioconverter, dumb mod extension, and a kinetic coil. For mods, you'll want a short barrel, vanilla receiver, light magazine, and a melee optimizer. Now by melee support, I mean a melee weapon that best supports projectile weapons, though all that means is an ultra rare weapon, as it has four or five augmentation slots, depending on whether you have the cryopod perk or not. But as we have a few options, we may as well go for one that is useful as a melee weapon too. For this, the best all-round option is the Asari Sword. It is ultra rare so it has all the augmentation slots and has a decently quick animation with the added bonus of giving you a few frames of invulnerability as it teleports you towards your target. This is especially useful for the ranged weapon user as you don't need to be right up close to utilise it. Its damage is also good. I have taken down fiends using nothing but the Asari Sword before in Insanity. The projectile weapon support comes from the fact that buffing augments placed in the melee weapon are always active, so if you put 5 kinetic coils into your Asari sword, you'll have an extra 15% weapon damage constantly active provided you have the melee weapon in your loadout. So that's the build, fill it with kinetic coils. Now this is super tough to answer. For me, the only weapon I really used to any length and consistency was the Darn, and it works really well as a singular weapon, but its range is occasionally an issue. My bias for that weapon shows that choice as preference based, so I need to pick another. The Hesh is the best overall DPS wise, but its range is a very limiting factor also. This makes me choose the Valkyrie with auto fire system and an optional scope. I say optional as it can be a hindrance in close combat. If you have skill points in pistols and not assault rifles, then the Hornet is a very worthy second place here and will be near identical. An Auto Valkyrie will do you for almost all ranges, weighs hardly anything, has great accuracy, acceptable clip size and max ammo, though as always I'll recommend the Bioconverter. No shield or armor modifiers but its damage is great without them too and its 25% weak point bonus does assist those with the targeting skills. Build wise you'll want automatic fire system, bioconverter, dumbbell extension and two kinetic coils. For mods you'll want a long barrel, vanilla receiver, heavy magazine and a heavy stock, giving you a fantastic weapon that won't impede even the physically weakest adept and won't disappoint the hardest of soldiers. Even considering the weight of this after the two heavy mods, it is still light and is meant as your one and only with adepts, probably using only this and soldiers able to carry more anyway. If you wish a scope, I would suggest changing the magazine for it. Penetration is too useful and the stock makes this far more useful at longer ranges. Thank you for watching folks. While I went for primarily logical thinking here, your preferences may differ. If you thought I was a bit off with any of these choices, then please let me know down below. I'm happy to continue this discussion in the comments. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit that like button. If you didn't, there's one for you too. This video could be useful to just about anyone who plays Mass Effect Andromeda, so share it with your gamer friends. And if you haven't already, think about subscribing. But above all, have an awesome day folks.